Hello, my mom is my friend and my teacher. And we have the hot sauce inside Gammy. And this, this is, is our show! I'm Eliza. I'm Jake, and you're watching Horse Rockets, filmed in beautiful Bavaria. This is episode 10, and we call it something with the word volunteer. That's just an excuse because we couldn't come up with a clever title. But here at Horse Rockets Academy, we like to create an environment that encourages us to be producers. Right now, we're producing the most popular space-themed, equestrian, educational YouTube video series in the world. That's impressive. And right now, it's time to tell you guys what we've got planned for this episode. First off, let's say something about our audience. You may not realize this, but our audience is full of folks who prove that regular people can do amazing things. Right now, we're not asking you to do the impossible. Just sit back, gather your crew together, and watch the show. As always, we're going to start with Rainey's Riddles. After Rainey's Riddles, it's... Dana's hunt into history. Then we'll get on with our main segment and our horse rockets high five. After that, we're going to present our weekly scorecard. Our scorecards are a more detailed review of some popular homeschooling curriculum. I'm excited. So Eliza, what are we waiting for? Just six little words. And what are they? Now it's time for Ray's Riddle. This episode's riddle comes from a popsicle stick. What's a cow's favorite activity? Stay tuned for the answer later in the show. Back to you, Eliza. I wonder what the answer will be. The only way we're going to find out is to keep moving forward with the show. Sounds good. Now it's time for Dale's hunt into history. For this episode's Hunt into History, I asked Elijah to join me. Thanks for having me on this part of the show. You're welcome. So how do we start this? We start with Monday, June 2nd, 1896. Is the date that Guglielmo Marconi applied for a patent for his newest invention, the radio. On June 3rd, 1888, the poem Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer was published in the St. Francisco Examiner. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood 4-2, to two, with but one inning more to play. And then, when Cooney died at the first, and Burroughs did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. What happens next, Elijah? June 4th. No, I mean the poem. Oh. I put the full poem in the show notes. They can read the rest at HopeHouseHorseRockets.com. On June 4th, 1876, an express train called the Transcontinental Express arrived in San Francisco, California via the first Transcontinental Railroad. It took only 83 hours and 39 minutes after leaving New York City. On June 5th, 1257, Krakow received city rights. On June 6th, 8, 1944, Operation Overlord began the Allied invasion of Normandy. Shortly after midnight, more than 24,000 British Canadian and U.S. forces began occupying the beaches. Thanks for letting me help you with this part of the show. You're welcome. I think you can handle the rest of the historical salute without me. Good luck. This week's historical salute goes to Sir Christopher Cockerell. Sir Cockerell is known as the inventor of the hovercraft. And hovercrafts are awesome. 
Mr. Cockerel, this salute is for you. Back to you, Eliza. Last week we took a trip off the beaten path and played around with the word bohemian. This week we're going to talk about volunteering. The history of this word starts with, sorry, I gotta get in character for this. I need to, Dad. This, the history of this word starts with 1600, where it was first used as one who offers himself as a military service. According to Daniel, I'm already old enough that I'm always in character. All right, so this word comes from the Latin word voluntarius, meaning of one's free will. The first time the word was used to refer reference to non-military service was first recorded in 1638, and first recording of the word volunteer being used as a verb was in 1755. Well, that, that's the history of the word, but what are we going to do with it? Silly Dad, we, we are a show done by homeschoolers, right? Right. So we're going to talk about homeschoolers and volunteering. So how do homeschoolers volunteer? Well, some parents build volunteering hours into the school, into the kids' curriculum, and activities they volunteer can help the school homeschooling work. So like working around elderly folk and learning about the history that those people have lived through? That's one way. Okay. I spend a few hours a week watching other kids, cool kids, other people's kids for free. Uh -huh. One hand, it's just for fun. The other hand, I'm getting value experience that I can use if I want to pursue a degree in early childhood de deployment. De Development. Development, okay. So what are some other places homeschoolers can volunteer? Schools. Oh, schools? What are you talking about, Eliza? You're homeschooled. Dad, don't you remember how I used to help Kathy Hapt prep her preschool classroom each week? Yeah. I did help organize lessons, straighten up the room, and get some great one-on-one -on -one time with my friend and a mentor. You're right, Eliza. So volunteering seems to be something you can do wherever someone else can use an extra hand. Last week, our youth group volunteered to help feed several hundred people at a picnic. It was hot. It was a fun work. But it was a fun work. Okay. And people, and the people we helped looked very happy we were there. How did you feel when you were done? Great! Did you feel great because it was over and it was hot or because you had done something to help others? Great because I did something to help others. Okay, so what, what about the time that you spent at the local radio station? What did you do there? At the local radio station, I got to go into this room where they had their quit radio equipment and the microphone set up and the posters hanging on the wall. It was awesome. Okay, so Eliza, that's a great description of what it looked like inside, but what did you do while you were in there? Oh, sorry, Dad, I got out of track. Well, I got to go and talk on air. I got to see how they set the music and the microphone volumes. I got to help pick up music pick music, and even write a commercial that is currently on the radio. Wow. I also learned that they call their commercials spots. Okay. So when someone reads a commercial for the radio, they're really reading spots? Ha, 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 Dad. Oh, okay, Liza. Um, can you read the radio spot you helped create? <laughs> Summer is almost here, and when school gets out... There's no telling what your kids might get into. Don't let them fall down the summer reading slide. Come down to the Lion's Den, June 5th, from 8.30 to 9.30 at Billstick Elementary School, Annex. Learn great ways to motivate your children to keep reading all summer long and avoid getting lost in the urban jungle of their living room. Good job, Eliza. You've done a lot. So, have you noticed a theme here? What's that? Community service isn't just for celebrity convents. 
That was a good one. No, it sounds to me like volunteer opportunities you described have given you insights to the world that you wouldn't have gotten from just reading a book. You're right, Dad, but I still like reading books, though. I know you do. And we think that a good education involves both classroom time and volunteer time. Hey, but speaking of books, what's the next book you're looking forward to reading? Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. You think we could do a show about it sometime in the future? Sure, but that's not going to happen in this episode. You already told me not to get off topic. Now it's time to end this statement. Cue the music. In this part of the show, we share something or someone we've found that's worthy of the grand status of high five dump. This week's high five goes to a real lot person. Well, that's new. Who does it go to? Well, we know her dad. It's Sandy Ber- Sadie Berger, who volunteered as a director for Kids Play. She helped produce Charlotte's Web here in Bavaria. Oh yeah, Daniel and Rainey were in it, and you got to help out too, right? Yes, I did. You, Sadie Berger, have been found worthy of the grand status of high five them. This high five goes to you. Here it is. Now it's time to reveal our curriculum scorecard. Homeschoolers have different interests when they buy a book for their curriculum. You want to know how much prep time it takes each, before each lesson, how long the book is going to last. Wouldn't it be nice to know ahead of time if the book was secular or religious? Is it going to adapt to different learning styles? We've got scorecards for curriculums up on horserockets.com slash scorecards that help answer these questions and others. This week, we're pleased to announce a scorecard for Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. If you've got experience with this book, please visit the scorecard page and you'll find a link to contribute your own feedback. Dad, we got a problem. What's the problem? We've been talking too much. Can't you see the person wants the answer to Rainy's riddle? Oh, I'm sorry. Here you go. YouTubers, have you figured out what's a cow's favorite activity? Maestro, drum roll, please. The answer is going to the movies. Thank you. As always, if you've got a little to share, put it in the comments below. Well, we're at the end of the show. Hurry! You're running out of time to give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and share this video. If you're really feeling generous, you can help out the show by clicking on the link, the Amazon link, in the notes below. Cue the music, people! Well, take time, do what you're gonna do.